All right, as you can see, I got everything loaded up, ready to go to the machine shop. Got my cylinder heads back here, block, old pistons and rods. Some new pistons, crankshaft down there. Uh, just some miscellaneous parts. I don't know what all they're gonna need, so I tried to bring as much as I could. But uh, yeah get everything back i'll show you how everything turned out i'm pretty excited all right so i got the engine parts at the machine shop and i took a bunch of other engine parts to powder coater with the water pump intake manifold air cleaner so i'm just going to show what i'm working on real quick while all that stuff's gone uh clean the timing cover up oil filter adapter just clean up some kerosene came out pretty good I could sandblast it if I want to. I got a little blast cabinet. But that stuff looks all right. Um, I was gonna have the front seal mod done, but uh, the gentleman that used to do it, I don't think he does it anymore. I've been having a hard time contacting him. So I might just have to go back with the felt seal. Um, I went ahead and rebuilt the oil pump. I got the rebuild kit from Studebaker International. Came with um, new gears and a new plate. So I went ahead and assembled that. And I'm working on the starter now. I'll put a picture of what it did look like. It had about five pounds of dirt on it. But this one has a old uh, Prestolite starter on it. So I took it all apart. Everything actually looks pretty good. Um, the only issue I've seen was the Bendix drive wasn't moving very freely. But um, I went ahead and dis disassembled it. And I think I could just clean everything up and put a little grease on it put it back together see if it moves a lot better um these snap rings are not very easy to get out of this thing i had a little bit of a time getting those out um but while this is all apart i'll probably clean the commutator off um the brushes actually look pretty good i might just emery cloth them and put everything back together to spray this out real quick and then i'll clean this off and repaint everything just so it looks looks good again so yeah i'll bring it back when i get the starter back together all right so figure i'd go ahead and sandblast the housing of the starter and the bendix housing and this little the end cap on it I uh, wasn't going to sandblast, I was just going to wire wheel it and paint it, but you other car guys know that you can start going too far with anything. So I tried to take this up the best I could because, you know, you don't want glass all through that. A um, little tip I might be able to offer people. So I taped it, you know, this way, and then I put a layer of tape this way. And if you want the edge nice and fine like this, if you just take a hammer and you tap the corner, all the way around where the tape is it'll tear a nice fine line there you can just peel it off so i'm going to be as careful as i can uh, when i put that in the blaster got it pulled out over here and so I'll try to clean these parts up and paint them so they look a little nicer but i'll show you how it turns out after paint them all right so i just went over the parts real quick with the sand blaster it came out pretty good and i just went over it real quick don't have to be perfect this is gonna be a lot better than it was to begin with i tried not to go over the tag on here it's a little tattered up but i'm gonna put a piece of tape over this when i paint it i just think it's cool to still have that on there yeah it came out pretty good about to pull the truck back in the garage figure i'll take a quick video of it sitting there camming just who doesn't like a good cam sound housing pieces all repainted I think it came out pretty decent I uh, just painted both of these black because it looked like it had black paint on it originally and then the commutator cover it looked like it was black too but I just painted it silver just to make it look better I mean it's a, it's a big difference you're never gonna see it but at least I went through and cleaned it and took some time with it um, 
I went ahead and cleaned the commutator off a little bit while I had it apart. Everything looks pretty good. Just sprayed it off, tried to clean the shaft real easily. You know, nothing too aggressive on it. So I'm gonna start reassembly. Oh, and I, um, I cleaned everything off of this drive and I just kind of brushed on a little bit of high temp wheel bearing grease, just real lightly on some of the parts in there. You know, you don't want to get it too greasy because then it'll just, you know, collect all the dirt or uh, brush material in there over time and it'll get stuck again. So this moves nice and free again. So that saved me $90. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this. There's not a real good way for me to kind of hold the camera and put this together. So um, the first thing you gotta do, there's a little thrust washer. You gotta put your thrust washer on there and then your center support can go on. And then you can put your, your Bendix drive on there and you'll just slide that on there. And you see there's a hole there and a hole here. And that's where you need to put this little roll pin. So you get that on there and then you can go ahead and screw your Bendix cover back on. So I'll bring you back after I get that done. All right, so we got the whole armature assembly installed and we got the drive housing on. It's just held on with two screws through the center support plate. So the next thing we need to do is I went ahead and clean off the brushes. They look pretty good and clean off the ones that are in the housing still. Went ahead and emery cloth this little terminal as well. And the next thing you gotta do is put this in here. You got to get this wire screwed on this plate right here. And then it's a little tricky. You need to get the brushes that are in there back in their holders. And you see the, they got these springs. So they're a little tricky to get back in there. But once you do, then you can uh, take three screws and there's three tabs here and just put the screws in through the outside and it holds the spring assembly in. Okay, so we got our brush assembly installed. Went ahead and cleaned this terminal up down there. Screwed it back on so it was nice and clean, had good contact on the brush assembly. Got that terminal screwed on there. It's hard to see, I know, but it's down there. There's a little screw right there. So the next thing you need to do is drop this whole housing onto the armature assembly. But obviously you can see here the springs have the brushes pushed out. So you gotta take your time and kind of finagle it and push them back in when you're sliding over the commutator because those brushes contact the commutator. So, and then uh, after you get that on, all there's left is two thrust washers and then your commutator plate and the long through screws. That's pretty much it. So I'll bring you back after I finish it up. Well, as you can see, I finished up the starter assembly. Um, everything seems to move real nice. This moves nice and free and it comes out like it's supposed to now before it wouldn't really move at all. Um, not really much to talk about on here. It's pretty simple. I did go ahead and get jumper cables out from one of my cars and I put the positive lead on this stud right here and I just touched the negative on this uh, metal body and confirmed that the starter, it moves and it spins. Uh, spins great, sounds good. So I think this will work great on the engine. So it didn't really cost me any money at all besides just time and labor and uh, cleaning, sandblasting, painting. It's about it really. Uh, so it's pretty nice just to take some time and fix something up that's old and it still works great. Uh, but thanks for taking a look.